Let's see. Uh, Actually, I mean, I can hear you so... Well, I guess I could get the headset in. You know, you'd think like you'd have this already together before you came on the on the line, and I just, I just have to think, is this even a real interview? I mean, it doesn't feel real, even at, even at this point. <laughs> yeah, it's funny, huh? You know what you are? <laughs> wait, hold on one sec. Let me let me get my notes. Hold on one sec. All right. Well, yeah. Let me wait some more. This is the kind of thing that bugs everybody, you know, because you're not ready. You're you got your you forget your notes and oh shit, wait, somebody else. Okay, what are you going to get a package or something? I'm waiting for you, like. I'll wait. Okay. Yeah. How's this been working, by the way, for the interviews, the software? Look, I don't know how anything's been working, okay? I've, I've done what I can do. I plug it in, my assistant hits a button, and then here I am, and... and and I, we're just waiting for you to get started. This is this is three minutes in, and we're, you know what my time is worth? Nothing anymore because you're not working anymore. Well, I'm starting a network, Gary. Where where's that at? You, your wife's house. <laughs> <laughs> we're just having fun. <laughs> All right, I'm ready to yeah. ready to roll. Let's see. Let me see where I'm going to put these. My little notes here. People are just going to fast, fast through this part because, I mean, I, I mean, how many questions do you have for me anyway? I mean, I got a few. I mean, it's, you know, you've really had an amazing career. Twenty-one seasons. That's incredible. I mean. You know, we're in season three of the Jeff Richards show, and we've had a lot of interesting stuff happen. Well, you know, 21 years is a long time, but if you're having fun, and I'm not, and I wasn't, and I'm still not, then it's, you know, feels like, you know, less time, oddly enough. And it feels like probably like 25 seasons. Or something like that. Maybe or 24 or something. Baker's yeah. double Baker's dozen. All right, I'm ready to roll whenever you are, Dr. Phil. Go ahead. Let's get this interview started because I'm already starting to chafe on the backside. Okay, okay. Well, oh, I see we're already rolling. I didn't even know we were rolling. Boy, we been are roll- here. Been, we're been rolling the whole time, Garrett. <laughs> we're very efficient on, on the Jeff Richards uh, show. So, uh, welcome to the Jeff Richards uh, show. Today we have Dr. Phil, an iconic. TV personality who just got off 21 seasons of, of the Dr. Phil show. How are you doing, Dr. Phil? What do you have to say it like that? God off. I mean, this isn't a porno. You can just say he did 21 period. Well, well this is compare- already off to a bad start. I, I think it's going great. I mean, you've had a long, amazing career and I think this is going to be the pinnacle to be on the show today. I think this is going to be the last time I even do zoom. I don't, to be no, honest with you, no, Dr. no, Phil, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just joking you. I'm just, I'm just yanking your chain. Yeah, I know. I, I can, I know when you're being facetious, Doctor Phil. I've, I've seen numerous episodes of the Doctor Phil show over the years, uh, twenty-one seasons. Um, how do you feel about that? Like, what are you doing now that the that the show's over? Well, getting ready for the network. Get, getting ready to to get fat again. You know, um, I make all the money. Well, (laughs) let's just say fatter. I'm getting ready to make all the money. You know, you make all the money. You own the network. You make all the money. And we're going to get a lot of little Dr. Phil's going, that type of thing. Maybe even a a female one or maybe even, you know, something else. Maybe just maybe a, you know, a turtle or something. Well, even your kids. I mean, I know your kids were getting into the business. I mean, are you excited about what, what they might be able to do with you? 
Well, of course. I mean, anytime you get nepotism going, it's it's a good time for all. And why not? Because it's their life too. And it's also a chance to learn something about yourself that you didn't originally know. Maybe something you don't like, but something that, you know, irritates you, but something, you know, something. Yeah. You know, one of the amazing things about your 21 seasons on the air is that you brought your wife to work every single day. Like most people use their job to get away from their wife. And every every day was bring Rob into work day. I mean, why why did you do that? Because she's got my balls in a, in a, in a, in a collapse. Uh, what do you call it? A vice? No, what's a collapse? No, what is it? A, what's the kind of thing you put? What's on the back of like a, a, a bracelet? That little thing that hooks to the other side. Anyway, she's a ball buster. And if I didn't do what I did by letting her come out every day, she'd she'd be up she'd be up me so far it'd be a, a pot full of squirrels running around. Yeah, I mean well, you've been married to her for how many like four decades. I mean Please, so don't what, remind it's me. been a successful marriage by any means when you well, say it's that? still we're still married. What do you want to say? What's successful? I mean I mean you know, I mean it's like she got my hands Todd. She's got my legs Todd, and then I just feel completely useless. And I mean I'm famous, I got money, but your wife, I mean, and I'm not talking about your wife. I'm talking about my wife. My wife is a, I mean, she's a piranha. She's a piranha, except she's not in the water. Yeah. What would you, for the viewers out there, what would you say the secret is to a long and happy marriage of however many years you've been married? Well, you just keep going. I mean, you know, you get her whatever she wants, and then you try not to get caught for, you know. You got to just play it st- smooth and then if you need to sand something off of the roof you just get the sander and just sand it right off the roof yeah my parents have celebrated their 58th wedding anniversary you know you know the secrets to to their marriage of 58 years what hearing loss like my dad's hearing is going his way always sits my mom to the right side of him because you can't be annoyed by what you can't hear is so, that right? So that you have also, to basically go deaf before you can get along. Well, I think that's just what keeps the keeps the marriage going is the hearing loss. So that that can be very so helpful. What am I supposed to do? Go to a bunch of concerts all in a row? I mean, I got to do my show. Well, I don't have to do my well, show. You don't have a show to do anymore. So well, now I got to get my net. Gary, I told you I got a network. You know what a network is? Yeah, it's like a bunch of people or something. Oh, like a TV network. Yeah, you got that too. You're just, I feel like you're making jokes when I'm making jokes. (laughs) And then I feel like both of the jokes are canceling each other out. So let's just get get to the basics. Okay. I'm not going to go deaf for my wife, but I will, you know, I'll go and, you know, I'll do dishes. All right. So... I didn't realize this. I, I, I did some research because on the Jeff Riches uh, show, we always do background research on all of our guests and stuff. And you actually played football in college. I mean, that's amazing. How, how do you think football helped you in psychology and, and, and running your, your TV program? I don't think it did. You know, I mean, you know, when I played football, I never washed any of the undergarments because that was a sense of weakness. You know, I had to, I had to keep the skin that was my skin. The skin is a uniform. I had to keep it on. And, uh, in order to, to play well, I had to be focused on something outside of my skin, something that you can't control, something that is a a spiritual awakening. I don't care if you're a lineman or you're a quarterback or you're a third baseman or you're a you know, basketball player. I mean, I don't even care if you're a hockey player or a, you know, a ping pong player. Or a, a, you get the idea. Yeah. It's all about teamwork, right? Yeah, I think so. I mean, you're asking real questions as if I'm supposed to give real answers, but we know these answers. Everyone's seen my show, you know? Not everyone. 
Well, I mean, I, I mean, I, I watch sporadically. Like I would see maybe a show every you know month or so if it had like a really interesting topic or a guest I was interested in. But over years, that's a lot of shows. Like I've seen you. I feel like I know you over the years. Well, you don't. So don't get so comfortable. I'm only kidding. You you, you don't lock me, D. I think you're wonderful. I think you're great. My I, my psychologist friends were always amazed how it would take them years to solve problems for their patients, and you could solve them in thirty like thirty minutes to an hour every time. Well, that's because we work it out before. I know who the guest's going to be. I know what's going on. I got writers. I got psychologists. I got everybody covered. I don't have to know anything. I just have to keep my mustache grown because right now it's grown and and it's always been grown. And that's the secret to my success. If you want to know the truth, that thick mustache, look at it right now. I mean, it almost makes you want to salivate, doesn't it? Kind of. Yeah. I noticed you left out one of the crew members. The editor. What's that? Well, you are the editor. What the hell are you talking about? Well, I'm the editor for mine, but you you left out the crew members for your your show. I mean, do you do you not? The editor is a very important person, right? Look, I could I did I also didn't talk about the gaffer, and I didn't talk about the sound guy, and a lot of different things. Every part is important, but the most important part is my mustache. You see, the mustache centers uh, everything, and everybody can have a good time. Once they know the mustache, they trust the mustache. If I was to shave the mustache off, people wouldn't like me anymore. That's probably true. Why do you think? Yeah, that would. That would what do I think? I, I, I feel like it wouldn't even be at, you without the mustache. Look at the mustache, Gary. Look at it. It's it's something. I don't need you to comment. I said just look at it. Okay. See it? Yeah. That's why people are going to miss it. And, they, and they're not going to miss me either. They're going to miss that mustache. So that's why I got to start a network and get other people with mustaches going. So who are you going to be hiring? Geraldo? Anybody else? No, just a couple Italian women. That's a joke. That's a joke because they got extra hair. Look, Gary, I don't know what this is, but I don't like it. But I'm going to keep going because I know that you seem like a nice guy. Your hair looks like someone's keeping it like it's static, like somebody took one of those light bulbs and put it around your head. It's just kind of going up. Well, I mean, the cool thing about my hair, there's no product in my hair at all. It, it, it's doing everything it can to get off my head. It's almost like it's grouping together saying abandoned scalp, you know? Like I got hey, fly away hair, so it's never flying back. Look, guys, going against Grand humor. I'm I'm not religious. My balls pop perfectly. Holds the yarmulke. Like my hair, my hair is not even more than Caitlyn Jenner. You know, it's amazing. You make yeah, another Caitlyn. joke. Do another one. Go ahead. Do another one. Uh, my hair is doing an impression Mission Impossible Fallout. It's heading towards oblivion. Your hair is the product. You don't put product in your hair. Your hair is the product. And I'm looking at your hair right now and I don't like it. So what what don't you like about it? I don't know. I don't maybe I like it so much I don't like that feeling of liking something so much. Yeah. I like how you don't shave it though. It's 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 at that point where you could and trust me, I know. Look, I got a bald head. I got a cap on now, but you know what my head looks like. You know. I think you've inspired. I think your hairstyle has inspired my hairstyle. You better get back to the interview. I think we might be just getting getting too full of ourselves. Speaking of flying away hair, um, I didn't realize this. You have a pilot's license. What What yeah. are you trying to escape from? I'm trying to escape from my wife. I already told you this. She comes to every show, and now that's over. Now she's going to come with me when I go to Home Depot or go to Long's. I don't have time for this shit. So I'm escaping. I'd like to get on an airplane. I'll do bungee jumping, too. I don't give a shit. Problem with bungee jumping is, though, they just pull you up, and you go right back to your normal life. Yeah. So. 
but there's a resiliency to a bungee jump. That's that's probably a good example of how somebody ought to be. Like if they they have a problem, they can be resilient and bounce back. Are you trying to be Doctor Phil? Are you trying to figure it all <laughs> well, out? I mean, there there seems to be an opening in the marketplace now that you're gone. Well, there's an opening in the conversation for you to shut your mouth. I'm gonna do what I do. Okay, I like I like those Hot Wheels. You ever play with Hot Wheels, Gary? I did when I was ten. Damn, those are fun. You know, because you just pretend you're driving it when you're racing it around. Yeah, they're a lot of fun. Who are um who are the who, who are you? Who were your favorite guests over the years on the Doctor Phil show? Oh, I like everybody, but you know, just you know, anybody stressed out or really freaky, you know. But a lot of people just playing it up on the show. Like we don't give people like food before sometimes, so they're a bit shaky, and then they come out and they're extra crying. Yeah, I um, mean, we do all kinds of things. Sometimes we don't let people in the building till right before. We'll be like, "Hold on a second, we're still in here getting dressed," and then they're outside waiting to come in and then you know rest is uh the rest is history yeah well we've had some amazing guests on uh, jeff richard's uh show we had jordan peterson can you say say his name right first how do you say his name you just said jeff richard come on gary pull it together <laughs> uh have you are you familiar with uh, jordan peterson sure what do you think of him because he's in your similar space. Well, I mean, he needs to start eating something besides meat. You know, I mean, now I eat a lot of things besides meat. That's not necessarily a clean diet. But just meat seems like a big problem. Also, I don't know where he gets his facts from. He speaks fast. He speaks succinctly. He sounds smarter than me, but people don't think that. They think he's a dummy and I'm not. So they've got it. They might have it right, actually. Yeah, we've had Hannibal Lecter. What do you think of him? Another psychologist. Yeah. Well, I mean, he lives in his own world. You know, anytime someone's gonna eat someone else, or you know, basically eat someone else, uh, you know, you got problems. You know, maybe you're on your phone too much, and you're just not connected with the world, and you just get hungry. You don't know what what's what, or Maybe you get angry because you just don't like walking so far. You got to walk home from work. That's not fun unless it's real close. Speaking of eating something else, one of our biggest guests was Gary Busey. Did you happen to see his episode? Oh, let's let's talk about buttered sausage. Where does it come from? What does it do? Get out of my face! Yeah, it I seems don't, like you I have. Don't, what's that? It looks like it seems like you've seen it. No, I've never seen it. I just read it in a book. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, what what do you think of that whole thing? We that I love episode books. blew up bigger, than, probably bigger than any episode of Doctor Phil. It's really amazing. Well, look, this isn't a competition, but if it was, I'd be wearing a speedo. <laughs> How would you analyze Gary Busey? Uh, Gary's a good guy. Gary fell off a motorcycle twice. You got to give him some slack for that. Yeah. Uh, I love his acting. I love Point Break. I love Buddy Holly's story. I love all those movies. But when you get to a point where you're fascinated or in awe of, of buttered sausage, something I've never heard of before, you know, and I wasn't born in Goose Creek, Texas, 1944. I mean, I don't, I butter, you put butter on toast or you can put it on you know, a, a, a bagel maybe, but. Yeah. These pauses seem to be almost too long. <laughs> well, between well, the, the good questions, thing is I know an editor I mean, can cut them down. Well, it's almost as if you're telling me you're not quite sure where you are. Well, I'm listening. I, I think what you're saying is so interesting that I think the audience needs time to reflect on, on what you've just given them. Like a poem? Kind of, yeah. Like a haiku. I can't just interrupt a haiku. That would throw it off completely. Well, if you interrupt a haiku, you got to throw a goodbye in there. Yeah. (laughs) So the interesting thing about Gary Busey is that his name's Gary, and there's no 
every Gary is a very disrespected name. Like it's always the character in the movie that's like the neighbor who's not cool, you know? Right. Like right. the the coolest Gary is in movies where Gary the Snail from SpongeBob and Gary from Team America World Police and he blows a guy to prove his loyalty. Like there's never right. a cool Gary in a movie. So somehow combining Gary Busey and I edited that episode along it, it it helped the power of two Garys helped that go completely viral and spread Listen, to the world. The only thing that's gonna spread is a venereal disease. And and that's gonna come out of uh probably a bathroom in Koreatown. And I'm not gonna be there, Gary. Okay? Mm-hmm. Look, you've got a responsibility to do. I know you you do the editing and you're you making the sound go up and down and you making frame rates and you, you know, you're hitting lighting buttons and, you know, bologna sandwiches. You know, I don't know what you do, but I know that you do it. And, uh, I mean, that's just, uh, you know, I don't have any, I don't even have an opinion about it, but I mean, you do you, if you think Gary's a, a, a stupid or weak name, then just change it to something like Calvin or something. That's a good idea. I I've actually haven't even thought of that until now. That's one of the most popular names this year. Calvin? Yeah, everybody's naming them, naming their babies Calvin. Like Calvin Harris. Like Calvin Klein, okay? Real, real genes. The kind of genes that you don't have to worry about sitting on your balls. Yeah. Because they're... They're tight, but they're not too tight. Next question. Um, I have a friend who has multiple personality disorder. He's he's always impersonating different people. How how could I help him? I mean, what's uh, what what's what's the problem? Well, he's not facing his true self. He's always living as different characters. Different yeah, but people. maybe. You're doing the same thing, but in different ways you're not aware of. You ever take bar soap and wash your face with it? Sometimes. Well, you're not supposed to. It's too abrasive. And if it's the kind that's got little seashells in it, you can cut your face open. Yeah. So yeah. it's lessons, Gary. You got to learn your lessons. Yeah. I think you're right. You know what's amazing? Like, I've... You know, I've been an editor, editor for 30 years. I've worked for Martin Scorsese, Jim Carrey, CBS, Sony, Universal. And the highlight of my career has been working for Jeff and then editing Gary Busey, Buttered Sausage. So where do, where does my career go from here? I mean, have you gone to the bathroom today? Yeah. How many times? Just once. So my prediction is you're going to take another bathroom break. And when you're on that porcelain throne, you'll find your idea. You got to get in touch with yourself, Gary. And on second thought, I do like that hair. I like your hair, Gary, but you, some photographs, it looks like, like I told you, like somebody just whacked you on the side of the head with a, with a wedding bell, you know? Yeah. And you, yeah. You could put a squirrel. Look, Gary, you could put a squirrel in the gunny sack and come overhead you throw that sack in the river, bring that sack back. He, he, he ain't going to buy you a clock radio and set it for you. Yeah. You don't lock me, D. I, I, like I said, I've been a big fan for a really long time. And, and Jeff would have loved to be here if he could, but he was busy. Oh, c- come on, Gary. You're a fan of mine? Yeah. What's with all the hard hit questions? Think of the amount of people you've helped over twenty one seasons. Yeah, but that just that's just TV. You helped that's Bad Barbie. TV. Yeah, but you know who well, Bad Barbie? You remember Bad Barbie? No, I don't remember that. What's that? She's the one who said, uh, "Step outside, we gonna wait." What was her line? Uh, oh, catch me outside. Yeah, catch me outside, girl. And what now about that girl's her? a huge. That girl's a very big star. She's like a, one of the biggest rappers around. From well, your I'm, from one line on your your program to one of the biggest rappers around is a, that's pretty amazing. See how you've transformed her life from well, just yeah. a nice innocent girl into a complete slut. How do you know she's nice and innocent? And by the way, how does that necessarily successful? I mean, a bunch of dumb people doing what I say. I mean, that's just 
that's not far from the Jim Jones thing. I mean, I'm just, I'm just a man running around with underwear on and they're, t- they're calling me the president or, or like a, or like a doctor or something. I'm not a doctor. I play one on TV. That's a joke. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. That's a joke. I just yeah. make a joke. Well, Bad Barbie, not only is a successful rapper, but also has a very successful OnlyFans too. So, well, so she piggybacked really off of the well, she piggybacked off of the Barbie movie. I mean, that's not that's just marketing. Yeah, it's very good marketing. Well, you know, you could say it's very good dog shit. It's warm. What's that mean? I don't. I'm not gonna eat it. Yeah. Let's not get crazy think, uh, hungry. Why do you think Jimmy Fallon is so excited? enthusiastic well i'll probably you know how you know athletes are given a certain something before they go out on the field so he might have a certain something he gets somebody slides it under the door i don't know maybe maybe tang or something i mean they they did go to the moon with that stuff but yeah i don't know he seems to be very excited but he's in great shape he's very thin so maybe that gives him extra energy uh i don't know how much water he drinks but I've met him a few times. It seems like a nice guy, you know. Yeah. What Omra, uh, Oprah really started your career, didn't didn't she? So I mean, ha- have you been speaking to her since you've uh, kind of retired? Well, you're you're not, you're not retiring, but have you? How often do you talk to Oprah? I go over there every night. And what do you? Guys I go do? over there every night, and I. I scrub the floor usually. I, sometimes I do the counters, but I scrub the floor and I show her my graciousness and my gratitude for what she's been able to do for me. So I go over there every now and then, you know, put a shelf up or, you know, whatever. Cause you know, I'm a bit of a handyman. So yeah, you're not a bit of a handyman. You are a very handyman. Well, I have hands and I'm a man's. So, you figure it out. I could put a hammer in my hand and I could put a screwdriver in my, my other hand. And uh, you get the point. Speaking of handyman, you know, who else you really almost helped was Britney Spears. Like when Britney was at a low point, you went over there and tried to help her, mainly for publicity, I think. But you almost helped her. And now it's not going as, as well. But what do you think? How, how can we help Britney Spears now? Well, I don't know, but she's she's a, a, a funny little cat because, you know, she wanted to be free for so long, and then once she's free, she's doing these bikini twirls and on a on a on on Spanish tile, and she's just going begin you know she's going going round and round and round, and uh, you With know knives, she's just way. smashing her boobs into sand and stuff like this, which I love, but I don't know if that's great look and. You know, you just got free. Maybe just low. You know, it's not like you know the you know the mob gets a a big deal of money, and then they don't just buy the pink Cadillac. That's in a movie. You know, they they wait a little bit. They hold it. They hold it down. You know, they don't they don't go crazy. The amazing thing is, she started dancing with knives not long after Gary Busey buttered sausage. I wonder if she was inspired by Gary Busey to dance with knives. You know, it's hard to figure that out. Those kind of those kind of situations where you start playing with knobs and you know, and I don't, I I haven't seen the knobs. I don't know if they're butter knobs or or, or paring knobs or or what. But anytime you play with a knife, you open up yourself for someone wanting you to open a letter for them. You know, you just like, oh, go. There's a letter person opener person. Yeah, I mean, they say you can't run with scissors, right? You probably shouldn't dance with knives either, right? Well, that's a hard question for me because I can't run, period. Um, I can make a a pretty wide step, but I can't really run at all, you know, because I'm just not going to. But then also I don't have the right shoes. I just got these big clod hoppers that I wear for the show, so... Well, the interesting thing also is that Britney Spears, one of her big hits is Crazy. And she's acting crazy now. So I think that her, some of her music really predicted her behavior. Well, that's that's the old trick. You know, it's like, I love chocolate ice cream. I love chocolate ice cream. Well, I've never seen you eat chocolate ice cream. So I don't believe you. So it's, a, it's the same kind of thing. I, 
I think they're trying to say like, I'm crazy or you're crazy or we're crazy. But anytime you're not specifying something, then it means you probably like chocolate ice cream. And I do. I love all kinds of ice cream. That's one of my problems. What are your other problems, Gary? Maybe I could work on you real quick. Um, what are my other problems? I probably work too hard. Um, what about what, the what, dating? Scene? What about the love love? What about the dating scene? Well, I just got out of a very, very long term relationship. It was almost, it was almost three months and I was dating a beautiful Filipina and I called her my thriller from Manila and she called me her 90 day fiance. And, uh, it's ironic because I kind of look like every guy from 90 Day Fiance. So Listen, I don't know if you're doing jokes or confiding in me, but I'm, either way, it's very upsetting. <laughs> this is just my life. You know, well, I, like just like look, well, get player. a new life. Get a new life, Gary. Guess what? They're for sale. They got them at Target. I, I love Target, too. You know, ironically, her ex-boyfriend looked identical to Tom Brady, and I look uh, like identical to a deflated ball. So I thought it was going to work out with my ex, but it, it fell apart, but we're still, your, we're still friends. Your like head, we, your head does not look deflated. It, if anything, it well, looks that would to have be to a be little body. Too, you, you haven't seen the full body yet. Well, full body. and guess what? Guess what? I don't want to see it. Okay. <laughs> Even you talking about it is making me upset. Um, you, that's the other area. You helped out a lot of people with your weight loss plans and, it was great because it looked like you need, like it never helped you, but it helped other people. I don't give a shit about people. I, honestly, I don't give a rat's ass. I got a blue Lamborghini. I like to make that thing purr. And I'm just running around. Like you said, I'm running around. Like I said. Yeah. Didn't you say that? No. But it's exciting that you are free now. I mean, it, it's, after 21 years of hard work, 21 seasons of hard work, are you happy to be free? I mean, beyond that, your wife is going to be there all the time. But Look, don't remind me about my wife, okay? She's like an old crow, you know? You know crows know a lot? They're as smart as a six-year-old. I didn't know that. That's amazing. Yeah, and one of them landed in my wife's hair, and I thought, well, maybe they'll go get hitched. <laughs> You know that I don't know if you remember Fabio. He was on a roller coaster and a bird hit him right in the nose. It was, it was terrible, but he was he that a movie or that happened? No, it happened in real life. And I drove by Fabio the other day on uh, on uh, Sunset Boulevard. He drove right by me, and you worked by. There's a lot of parody here because you worked on Sunset Boulevard, and I drove by Fabio on Sunset Boulevard, and you know we Sunset Boulevard is connecting us. I think. Is this supposed to be a question? I mean, I don't give a fuck about Fabio or, or what he's gotten. <laughs> you driving past him, he's driving past you. Just fucking do it in a hotel room. I mean, I don't even give a shit. I don't give a shit, honestly. What do you care about now? I like my blue Lamborghini. I like stuffed animals. I like macaroni and cheese. And I like punching a wall as hard as I can, breaking my hand. You know, what about your kids? You like your kids? No, I don't like my kids. I don't like not. No, I don't. They're just they're too entitled, and they're just maniacs. I mean, they're my kids. What do you expect? What um now that you're what are your plans now that you're free? I mean, you got the new network. What what are some of the exciting things you you have planned? Nothing, man. I mean, I'm just gonna keep going. I don't give a shit. You know, I mean, like like I said. I, I am Dr. Phil. I'm happy to be doing what I'm doing. If I was doing something else, I'd probably just quit. That's how happy I am. And to have my own network, finally I have the power to be God and to um, and to act like, you know, act accordingly. Act, you know, pray. basically I'm going to act like God because, you know. Now I'm not saying I'm God, but I'm acting like God because I got a network. Yeah. And that's as close to God as you can get. Yeah, unless you can get some, like a timeshare or something, you know. I mean, I don't know where he hangs out. I mean, he's everywhere. People say he's everywhere. I don't know. I haven't seen him anywhere. But I feel him. 
I feel him. Yeah. I, I see you as a deeply spiritual person, so that's I can see how you'd feel him. You know, I'm just now looking down the monitor. I've been looking straight at the camera the whole time. I didn't even know you'd be on the monitor. And then I, I now, now I'm look, I, 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 I'm cutting out. I'm cutting out. I'll see you later. Just kidding. <laughs> okay, you need to go. I'm just kidding. Right. I'm ha- I'm loosening up. Can you feel I'm loosening up? A, a little bit. I always thought of you as a loose person. Well, then maybe you're attracted to someone you never met. Could be. I don't know. When you want to meet? On Sunset Boulevard. Maybe we can get a bite to eat or something someday. Do they still have that Poquito Moss on Sunset? Possibly. I heard it turned into a deli or something. Yeah, could be. A lot has evolved. It's been. Wait, a very- well, why don't you know, Gary? How come you don't know what if there's a Poquito Moss? I, I know where you live. I there was a Piquito Moss, but I don't know if it's still there. I haven't been there in a while. But I think okay, it was well near then, your studio, ironically. Thank you, you for being a honest. you like the Moss? I like the bean cup. I just like beans in a cup. No spoon. All right. What, what else do you eat? Anything else interesting? What else? It, well, no, not really. I'm just... I don't know what the fuck's going on, man. I got my own network. I'm not doing my shows anymore. Uh, I got a kitty cat. I'll just care about more than anything in the whole world. I just love kitty cats and I'm allergic, but I like it because it gives me the symptoms of being sick without being sick. So I can turn it on and off because I am a bit of a masochist. What after having 21 seasons of the show, what, what advice could you give to Jeff? Um, for Cause he's, he's an, also an amazing host. And, uh, you know, TV personality, what, what well, advice I do love, you give to Jeff? I love Jeff Bridges. I really do. But I don't think I need to give him any advice on what he's doing. I'm just, just kidding. I know who Jeff is. Yeah. I mean, I'd say. He's on Saturday, wait, let me, let, hold on. Let me just give you his resume. I mean, he was on Saturday Night Live. He was on Mad TV. He's been, he's been doing stand up all over the country. I mean, there's a little basic for you. And then he's got this incredible show that we has been seen by 50 million people. You got to hang in there. Even when you're not in a place that allows you to hang. Like you can't go to Applebee's and just hang. So hang in there. There being the operative word, not operating like a doctor, but somewhere in between. There is a, a, a grandstand attitude that comes from someone that knows what they're doing. And there's a bigger attitude from someone who does not know what they're doing because they are firing in all cylinders because they don't know what to say, what to do. Like I'm doing right now. I don't know what I'm saying. I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm doing it. That's some great advice for anybody. Thank you very much, Dr. Phil, for coming on the program. I know Jeff is going to be very happy to see and hear some of your wisdom. And uh, that was outstanding. So thank you very much for being on. And let me just say this, Gary. You know what you are? What? Asleep. You know what you need to do? Wake up. I want to say that in the middle, but I, anyway, I just. Well, I'm the editor. I can move that to the middle if we really want. So. Well, you, that's just great. Thanks so much for having me, Gary. I really do appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, no, thanks uh, for taking time out to... from your new network and coming on the program. And we'll talk to you soon. Okay. Bye bye.